KDE Plasma is one of the most recommended desktop environments for Linux out there. And it's not really hard to see why. It looks familiar to a lot of users that are coming from Windows, it offers a wide range of customization options and it is way quicker to adopt anticipated features in comparison to other desktop environments. And in this video, we are going to take a more critical standpoint and talk about the things that I really love about Plasma, some things that still need a bit more work and in the end how we can shape it into a unique experience for ourselves. Let's start off with the thing that makes it look very familiar to Windows, the taskbar. While Windows and many other desktop environments only feature one taskbar, KDE Plasma allows you to use several. Each taskbar can be adjusted in its size and length, and you can also make them float. The Plasma panels feature a wide variety of different widgets that can be attached. Some of them also provide some functionalities that you would usually find on macOS. If you don't like the default color scheme or blur, then you can swap them by choosing a different theme. Speaking of, KD Plasma features a wide range of different designs that you can choose from in the software store. There's also a neat little browser built into the settings themselves. Simply select the theme that you like, install them and apply it. And just like that, you just made your whole desktop look a whole lot different. If you are not a fan of global themes, however, then you can also design each element separately. You can choose different icons for applications, your mouse cursors and also the task switcher if you don't like KDE Plasma's vertical approach. However, you don't even need to necessarily download any themes since you can also customize Plasma right out of the box. You can choose from a wide variety of different effects that can blur your window, add some translucency, make them wobble, show you the current FPS if you're playing a game and much much more. If you want to make your desktop even more powerful, then you should definitely look into widgets. While we've already mentioned them early in the video, there are a whole lot more widgets to download in KDE Discover. There are weather widgets, time widgets or useful utilities like KDE Connect, which allows you to interact with your phone. You can also swap out the default applications launcher or add some useful statistics about your PC. Another thing where KDE Plasma is really powerful at is setting global hotkeys, since you can essentially rebind everything. Oh, and another useful thing in that regard, which is also currently utilized in GNOME, are hot corners or screen edges, which basically allow you to trigger several actions when you move your mouse into the configured corner. I personally use it to bring up a GNOME-like overview, which shows all of my open maps. In comparison to other desktop environments, it is also extremely easy to set auto start applications and manage background services straight from the settings. Though this is a bit redundant to the system monitor in my opinion. But it is what it is. Have you ever noticed that sometimes when you use GNOME, some applications get this very thick and old looking GDK3 top bar? Well that's because GNOME doesn't handle the Qt framework as well as Plasma handles the GDK framework. While you still can't make them look entirely different, on Plasma you can at least change their color scheme to make them look more integrated. In comparison to GNOME, KDE Plasma also offers a lot more features that have been anticipated by the Linux community for quite a long time. Variable refresh rates for adaptive or FreeSync, fractional scaling on Wayland that also supports x apps to a certain extent and, very important for hardcore competitive gamers, tearing for games. What is also really convenient is that you can copy content from your web browser straight into your file manager. While GNOME 44 handles images a bit better, KDE Plasma's Dolphin is a lot more powerful. And it also displays network shares correctly. Now those were just some things that I really like about KDE Plasma. But that being said, there are still a lot of things that need some work. One thing that I find a bit of odd are the redundant menus when it comes to installing themes. For example, like mentioned earlier, you can do it straight from the settings or from KDE Software Store Discover. Now installing themes is not really a problem, however, removing them is a whole different story. Especially the window decoration themes are extremely tedious to remove in comparison to others. Why is there no remove button? Sometimes it has something to do with your global theme, but I've also experienced situations where I could only remove them through Discover. And I'm not entirely sure why. Speaking of, let's talk about Discover. 
let me tell you, the overall experience is solid. However, if you want to search for programs, delete the search and search for another one, then very often it just seems to get stuck and it loads infinitely. Then you need to close it, open it up again and start searching from the beginning. Another thing that I don't really like about it is its installed page. And this has a lot to do with the redundancy I was talking about earlier. If you have several themes installed, then they mix in with your applications. And the question really is if always searching for it is really the right approach to usability. My personal suggestion for this would be to split up the installed apps into applications, themes and widgets. This would make it a whole lot easier to just find applications that you might want to remove. Instead of going into the application launcher, scrolling through all the installed apps and then searching for them in Discover. It's just not as convenient. Another thing that I would appreciate was a back button for customization. Like if you mess up your theme, then there is no easy way to go back. Unless you want to reset your theme as a whole. Now to be fair, that might not happen all that often, but having the option would be really nice. Now, the next thing would be design guidelines. I know, KD Plasma has design guidelines. And they're actually really good and detailed. However, they are not applied yet to many applications. Having a unique style is very hard to achieve. But if we compare GNOME to KDE Plasma, then I would say that GNOME is easier to use by most, since once you know how their applications are built, you can basically use everything. And it's not quite the same on Plasma. One thing that I said I really like about Plasma was global hotkeys. But there are some inconsistencies. For example, you can't rebind the Windows key with the GUI, since triggering the application menu is handled by KWIN, the compositor. You can customize that of course, but it involves the terminal. And new users and the terminal is always a mixed bag. Another thing that is weird about the hotkeys is their default layout. The overview for example is triggered with meta and w. But like why? Setting hotkeys heavily involves preference. But the default ones in my opinion should make sense to the user. For example, for the overview I would set control O. That might not be as intuitive to use, however, the user can more easily remember it. And they could change it to something else anyway. But yeah, that's a subjective matter. Last but not least, the settings. Now, I know, they are being reworked for Plasma 6, but I want to talk about them in their current state. There are too many settings that are directly exposed to the user. What do I mean by that? If we take a look at the settings, then the first column is completely fine in my opinion. But if we select something like the workspace behavior for example, then we get a whole lot more settings which from the icon look a bit the same. And they also handle a lot of different things that don't really seem to interconnect. For example, in the tab screen locking, you can customize its appearance. But then again, why isn't that in appearance in the first place? Or under window management you get the task switcher, whereas you can also select the theme right here and not in appearance. In short, there are a lot of settings that could be summed together into just one big category. The appearance subcategories for example can easily be summed up and hidden under an advanced button, which customizes the theme directly. The way that it currently is provided is very easy to use for more advanced users, but not necessarily for new ones. And I personally think that that needs to change. In conclusion, KDE Plasma is one of the best desktop environments on Linux if you want to customize it into your perfect experience or just want a responsive and up-to-date desktop, no matter if you're a designer, gamer or content creator. Many of you know that I switched to KDE Plasma exactly because of those strengths. What I'm looking for is the best possible way to get a smooth and efficient workflow by combining the best of GNOME with the best of Plasma. Since I also want to play games on my PC, features like variable refresh rate and tearing are essential to me. And KD Plasma is just the perfect desktop environment for that use case. If you've liked this video then please feel free to show it with a like and eh, why not also subscribe to the channel? By the way, if you want to watch my videos without any annoying YouTube ads, then you should also check out our new membership program in the description down below.
And all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are. I'll see you around.